What's up everyone? Welcome back to another cooking video and today we are going to talk guacamole. The avocado. How delicious are you? Uh, we're going to talk really quick about avocados and just making good guacamole that you can spin off of if you want. You can add toppings to it, you can add ingredients into it, fruits, whatever. You know, you can, it's, the world is your oyster with guacamole, really. I mean, I know there are tried and true traditionalists. I ain't about that life. Sometimes I just like to be inspired by tradition and then, you know, create something new using that tradition or something just of the era or of the date, if you will. Um, but always keeping in mind the respect to tradition and what that is because it's not my food. You know, I didn't grow up eating avocados or making guacamole. So I think you always have to cook with a mindfulness of tradition. We're really talking about just good, delicious guacamole and what we can do to it and how we can use it afterwards. Let's do it. Here we have our, what I consider to be basic ingredients. Well, I should say some basic ingredients, some maybe not so basic ingredients to make guacamole. But we've got avocados, ripe, to test ripeness for an avocado, you just want to give it just the slightest press with your thumb. And if it starts to give way, it's usually ripe. If it gives way a lot, that means it's usually past its prime. Uh, still, you can use it. Uh, you just don't want it to be have too many brown spots on the inside because then it just tastes like crap. Once it has some slight give, that's kind of where your wheelhouse is for avocados. We've got cilantro kind of always in there. Onion always in there. Garlic can or cannot be in there. I like garlic in the guacamole. I think it adds a lot of character and flavor. I've seen people add garlic powder, which is kind of interesting, and I can kind of see how that works, but I'm going to go with a little bit of fresh garlic, red onion, lime, always a, uh, a must. I kind of go a little heavy on lime because I really like it, <laughs> like it, I guess. Uh, and I think it, the acid kind of helps with the longevity of it. Typically, I do about one lime per decent size avocado. If your avocados are smaller, you know, you can do a little less lime. If they're larger, you can do a little more. But as a rule of thumb, I try to do one zest and one juice of a lime per avocado. Uh, we have now this. These are my own house fermented jalapeno peppers. I typically use one to two per avocado, depending on how spicy I want it. You can use less. Uh, you can obviously use fresh jalapeno or even a serrano it is awesome. It all depends on what kind of heat you want in it. I have these delicious, awesome pickled jalapenos in house. So I'm going to use those. Please feel free to use a regular jalapeno in its place. And then uh, I have an orange pepper, uh, which I think just adds a little bit to the color. And lastly, I know this can be controversial. Uh, a lot of people just swear by you should never put tomato in your guacamole. I'm not of that camp personally. I think tomato is delicious in, a, in guacamole. Uh, however, I am of the camp that if it's winter, you probably should never buy fresh tomatoes. Unless they're, sometimes the cherry tomatoes are okay because they're usually hot house and they ripen faster and they're just a better product in the winter. So that's a note for your future. If I'm going to use a fair amount of tomato and I want flavor in the winter, a lot of times I will use sun-dried tomatoes packed full of flavor. I actually love the texture and I think it goes really well in something like guacamole. And I think it looks really pretty, especially if you just put them on top. Sour cream is another one that some people say yes. Some people say no. For me, I love the creaminess that just, you're not using a lot, a, a nice big spoonful per avocado. Two things on this. One, it brings more acid to the table, uh, which helps longevity. Two, adds creaminess, obviously, sour cream. Three, avocados are expensive, especially right now. Uh, and with, you know, events coming up like Super Bowl and parties and get togethers, sometimes you got to make ends meet. Adding a couple spoonfuls of sour cream to your guacamole, I think is an added bonus, stretches your product out, gives you more for less. And, uh, you know, again, I think it's actually super delicious. These here are the ingredients we're going to use to make our guacamole. So I don't think you need any sort of crazy tools. 
uh, you know, to, to pull this off here. Pretty simply, bowl, microplane, juicer, fork, knife to smash it all together. So first thing I'm going to do is very gently zest the lime so we don't get too much of the pith. And I just love the lime zest. I just think it adds a ton of flavor. Now everyone should have one of these. These are just the best quick juicers. Give you maximum juice per squeeze. Uh, since we have our microplane out, we're going to take our garlic. We're going to microplane our garlic, making sure not to get your fingers. Then we're going to set this aside. We're going to take our pepper. And again, we don't need this whole pepper for that much. Okay. Uh, get rid of any of the extra white that's on there. And just give it a nice dice. All right, just like that. And again, for this, I think it's enough. Now, feel free to add more if you want. Now, I am making a small amount. I'm only making two avocados. So basically, this is for two people. Jalapeno. I'm do two of these. Where I'm, I'm just going to... You can just do slices. If you're doing uh, you know, regular jalapeno at home. I leave the seeds in personally, but then I'm going to give these another quick chop. But you can leave them in slices like this if you want. And dealer's choice. Uh, I'm just going to give them a little quick chop just so that they spread through the guacamole a little bit more. Now for the red onion. Now we don't need the whole red onion, obviously. We're going to peel it. Literally, I'm going to use about a quarter of the onion but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna cut it this way so that I can leave this intact for easier storage and use later. I like a little bit thinner, so I take my time to make these first juliennes. Rotate it out, give it a nice fine dice, just like that. Going to add probably about a solid tablespoon of salt, a couple cracks of pepper. And we're just going to stir this up just so things get kind of marinating a little bit. I take these sun-dried tomatoes. You don't have to use a lot of them because they're, they're pretty potent, just like the pepper. Beautiful dice. Again, I think using sun-dried tomato in the winter is probably the move if you're going to put tomato in it at all. All right, now we've got our avocados. Hopefully we've got beautiful avocados. I'm going to put our sour cream in there. One nice big spoonful. I think at least you can do more if you want for an avocado. That's two heaping spoonfuls. And now we also take our avocados, cut around. All right, you have beautiful avocados. So uh, what I like to do, uh, I take the knife, just give it a little jab. I'm going to reserve these because, you know, I've never taking the time to look if it was the truth or not. There's an old tale about saving the pits and putting it into guacamole to, uh, to make sure it doesn't uh, you know, get nasty on you. Uh, it's something I do just out of thing if I'm going to let the guacamole sit for a couple hours or even overnight with your spoon. Pop them in there, make sure you get all that out. Can't waste, right? Can't waste. And now, simply, Against the side of the bowl, you're gonna mash these avocados. I like doing it kind of off-centered first, if you can, just to not just smush the vegetables too. And once you get them decently smushed like that, again, you don't have to get it super smooth. You just take it and mix it really well. And that will continue kind of the, the smashing process, if you will. That's beautiful, super creamy. Again, if you want to keep the sour cream out and just do straight avocado, oh, dude, 100%, like, you roll that way. But for me, like I said, I love the creaminess that it adds, the shelf life that it actually adds to it as well, in a lot of ways. So I like to put it in. So let's give it a little taste, so check our seasoning. Oh, that's really good. Needs it just a touch of salt. And now lastly, we want that herbaceousness. We take our washed cilantro. You don't need a ton, just like that. Again, you can add more if you like. It's all up to you. Uh, I actually really like the stems in cilantro. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of a chiffonade. 
of sorts. And this will add that beautiful, fresh flavor. The rest is fine. I, I like a little bigger leaf in there. And I even like the little bigger stem in there just for texture. Get one last good stir. And that's it. That's exactly what you want. A lot of people will ask, what's the best way to keep cilantro from turning brown? We have, again, taken some of those steps already by adding the sour cream, lime juice. This is another way, the best way, the most scientific way, I should say, to keep it from turning brown. Oxygen is your enemy, okay? Best thing to do is try to remove as much exposed surface area as possible. I don't like to store it in the bowl that I made it. So what I'll do is get a nice rubber spatula, create layers here, pushing down. Okay, you're not smashing it, but just pushing it down to make sure you're trying to make full contact with the bowl and you're not leaving too many air gaps underneath. To serve it, you can kind of fluff it up later, but we're not concerned with the service part of it at this moment. We're really just thinking about how to store it. All right, once we have it all out, again, we're just pushing it down. Just like that. Now, using the old wives' tail method, push the nuts or the pits back into it. Okay. Again, you'll remove those later. For some reason, I think it helps. Uh, again, I don't think it's scientifically proven. The thing that I know works is what you should always do. And that is take a piece of plastic wrap. Not too much. You don't have to wrap the whole thing or anything. Just a little piece like this. Okay. And then surface contact is your friend. So making sure... You push the oxygen out from underneath, kind of work your way from the center over, just like this. Okay, and once you get to the edges, just tuck them a little bit. You don't go crazy, just tuck them a little bit. Now this will sit beautifully in your fridge for hours, 100%. No question, hours, no doubt. I've done this even overnight, and it works overnight as well but you'll will start to see some browning on the top, but underneath it's beautiful. So you can either just scrape that little bit of brown off and serve, or just make it that morning and serve it when you're ready. It's probably the best way to do it. There you go. Beautiful guacamole to store until you're ready to use it for game day or whenever. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little tutorial on what I consider to be some of the best guacamole and it's always a fan favorite whenever I bring it anywhere or just have it on hand to eat at home. So give it a shot at home. Again, you can mix ingredients in and out if you wanted to add, say, mango or something like that or pineapple even. Go for it. Give it a shot. You know, as long as your technique is sound, you can experiment however you like. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Thanks everyone, peace.